What's going on guys? Welcome to round one of the Game Cafe Ultra Series Premier Challenge held in Independence, Missouri. Uh, this is in the Kansas City area. My name is Leonard Kraft and I will be filling in on commentary until um, Jake and Franklin uh, hop in for game two. We had some audio issues in this round one. Uh, the audio uh, wasn't being captured correctly for game one and it wasn't realized until uh, midway through. So we got corrected for game two. So once that uh, gets corrected, you'll be hearing uh, Jake Mueller and Franklin Lewis on the commentary side. But until then, you've got me. And so I'm here to offer my insight on this round one match until those two come on. To start off, we have uh, Ricky here on the bottom screen, or on your left, as you'll see here, with his team of Mewtwo, Crobat, Incineroar, Tepu Lele, Groudon, and Landris T. And on the opposing side, on Ethan's side, we have Xerneas, Groudon, Persian, Salamence, Bronzong, and Smeargle. So the first thing to point out is that this is Ultra Series, so that means that we're likely that, that these Pokemon here are going to be able to Mega Evolve and Primal Revert. Both of these Groudons are sure to be Primal. There's almost no reason to use regular Groudon in this format. Um, and likely Mega Salamence on Ethan's side and Mega Mewtwo on uh, Ricky's side, although it doesn't have to be Mega Mewtwo. You could run, for example, a Life Orb Mewtwo set, and that's not even too bad, but like, more likely the Z-Move is going to be on Landorus, I imagine. It's Mega Mewtwo, Z-Move Landorus. Z-Move Landorus is considered to be pretty strong because it's able to knock out Primal Groudon in one hit. You can also do a decent chunk of damage to Xerneas. Um, with, the Z -move, with, the with the popularity of Primal Groudon, Z-Move Landorus has really ro risen up as a way to respond to that. Although it can't take Eruption very well, it easily switches in on Precipice Blades. Um, it still takes a decent chunk from Fire Punch, even after Intimidate. But um, it will be faster and can threaten a lot of damage. Uh, you can also run Z Earth Power if you want. There's quite a bit of options here. So both players have locked in, and we'll be waiting to see what each player decides to uh, try out for this first game. We see Ethan lead with his Smeargle and Bronzong, so uh, clearly indicating that he wants to set up Trick Room and uh, probably use his Groudon to break through Ricky's team with Presbus Blades, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Um, most of Ricky's team appeared to be fast, uh, you saw he had the Mewtwo, we see the Crobat and Tapu Lele come out. Um, typically on these sorts of uh, double psychic teams, um, with either Mewtwo or Necrozma, the Tapu Lele is holding a Choice Scarf. So for example, something like a Follow Me from Smeargle, and a Trick Room from Bronzong could be really strong. Um, that means Trick Room is going to get set up, and immediately afterwards, um, if uh, Ricky, for example, goes for a Super Fang and a Psychic into the Smeargle, then that'll knock it out, and Groudon can come in, you can fire off Gravity Precipice Blade, so... I imagine Ricky is probably going to try to respect that in some ways. Uh, we can also see a taunt from Bron or excuse me, a taunt from Crobat. Uh, that wouldn't be too unreasonable. We do see the Tapu Lele move before the Crobat, so it is holding a Choice Scarf. Moon Blast will knock Smeargle down to its Focus Sash, yeah, and it is a Focus Sash, not a Mental Herb or some other unusual item. We do see the taunt. I really like this taunt. Uh, what the taunt does is it forces Ethan to uh, pick a different option, if you will. Um, if he had, if the Smeargle had gone down to a combination of Super Fang and Moonblast, which uh, would have definitely knocked out the Smeargle, um, then Groudon would have been able to come in and go for Gravity P Blades. Now, you're in a slightly more awkward position. You can still switch out your Smeargle to uh, Groudon because the Tapu Lele is locked into Moonblast. So Moonblast won't do very much damage to Groudon, but Crobat can, for example, go for a Super Fang into that slot, and uh, Ricky can respond with a double out from his Tapu Lele or switch both Pokemon out. We should see Ethan just immediately retreat his Smeargle for Groudon, though. Groudon here is in a great spot. Again, the Tapu Lele being choice locked into the Moonblast means it won't be able to do much damage. Um, also, the because the Crobat is now slower, you can opt for a Super Fang Moonblast into Groudon, and that will do significant damage. Uh, Crobat can also opt for a Taunt on the Bronzong. Uh, the Bronzong could go for Gravity here to guarantee the accuracy of Precipice Blades. Um, and doing so um, would remove uh, Crobat's Flying type as well, which would be very important. Um, and that allows Precipice Blades to just knock out Crobat straight away. We also see Ricky uh, understanding that uh, Groudon is likely going to come in, matches it with his own Groudon. Uh, this Groudon has a rather low HP stat, so um, unlikely to uh, be a bulky Groudon, which means it may fall to the combination of another uh, Gyro Ball and Precipice Blades. We actually uh, see the Gyro Ball be uh, attacked into what was formerly the Tapu Lele slot. I think that's a decent play there from Ethan. Uh, just attack the thing that will, you know, be a problem later on in the game. Your Bronzong is really good against it, but if you can just remove a Pokemon, that really frees up 
uh, the power of Groudon to just be able to click Precipice Blades uh, through the entirety of Ricky's team. And so Super Fang does land into the Groudon, uh, getting the most damage he can out of his Crobat on this turn. But now Gravity Precipice Blade seems to be in a, a really good uh, option, I think, that Ethan can go for. Um, you'd be able to just blast your way through the Crobat. Um, we do see the Groudon Protect, um, understanding that the Precipice Blades is likely coming. And we actually see the Bronze go for Skill Swap. Interesting. So not a Gravity. Um, and instead, uh, this will allow the Groudon to completely ignore the um, uh, Precipice Blades from Ricky Sider, the special in Earth Power. But you see the Swords Dance as well come out. Uh, the Taunt goes into Bronzong, uh, so the Bronzong is unable to use, um, if it wanted to use, well, it wouldn't be using Gravity because it already has Skill Swap, so uh, you, you usually don't see Gravity and Skill Swap on Bronzong. Normally, Bronzong, they run Levitate. Uh, or well, they they can either run uh, a heat proof set with uh, a lot of physical defense, um, or but skill swap can also be seen. You see the gyro ball land into the crowbat, um, and we do see the press displays because of the swords dance previously. This will easily knock out Groudon, even if this was a bulkier Groudon. Uh, there is no way that it would survive this attack, and as long as it connects, which it does, it will easily knock it out. Crowbat will be able to do something in return. Uh, we do just see a haze, so uh, eliminating the swords dance boost from the Groudon, but. So this is a really tough position for Ricky, I'd say. Ricky has to figure out how to uh, beat this levitating Groudon. We know he has Tapu Lele in the back. I'd be able to Psychic, but it can't come in right now. Um, a Gyro Ball would just be too threatening on that slot. And we do see the Mewtwo come in, so Mewtwo, uh, definitely a Pokemon that can at least use Protect. Um, how many turns of Trick Room are left? So he set Trick Room, then he went for Gyro Ball, then he went for Skill Swap, then he went for another Gyro Ball. So this is the last turn of Trick Room, if I'm... If I've counted correctly, yeah, Psychic Train also has one turn left, and that's the same turn Trick Room is set up. So this is one turn of Trick Room, um, which means that Mewtwo is going to be able to protect. Uh, likely, he's just going to Ricky's going to give up his Crobat, and then he's going to try to break through the rest of Ethan's team with his Tapu Lele and Mewtwo. But I'm honestly not sure if he's going to be able to do that. This Bronzong here, uh, because the Groudon's fallen, is in just a, such a awful spot. <laughs> well, it's going to be so difficult to break. Um, it is. It has been taunted. I believe the turn Trick Room ends, he will have the opportunity to... Or he won't have the opportunity to tr uh, Trick Room again immediately, so it'll still be kind of awkward positioning for Ethan, but uh, nevertheless, he has um, all the offense here, and he's he's ready to press it. We actually see the Mega Evolution from Mewtwo and the Protect immediately, so revealing that it is the Mega Mewtwo Y. Uh, no big surprise there, but um, it, al it also guarantees re to reveal that it's not a Z-Move variant on the Mewtwo, so uh, I would have rather seen the delay of the Mega Evolution, but I mean, it's not really incredibly consequential. Uh, we're going to see Tapu Lele come in. Tapu Lele is going to be able to threaten Groudon with a Psychic, and if I um, paid attention, the Bronzong's Taunt did not wear off, so it means it is forced to use Gyro Ball this turn, but that's not even that bad of a move to use. Unless this Tapu Lele and Mewtwo are both carrying Shadow Ball, I don't think Bronzong will be able to be knocked out. If that's the case, uh, Bronzong is just going to be able to knock out Tapu Lele, and then Ricky would have to 4v1 Ethan's team with his uh, Mewtwo, which seems unlikely. I mean, even though you have Psychic Terrain up, which will boost the power of Mewtwo's uh, likely Psy Strike. Typically, you run Psy Strike on Mewtwo. Uh, even though Psychic does hit ground slightly harder, you typically still run Psy Strike for Pokemon like Xerneas. Um, it's going to be difficult to break through. Ethan can also switch out his Groudon. He's got a Smeargle left in the back. That uh, Smeargle would be a decent sack here. Um, you can also use it for uh, Follow Me sack in the end game. Um, there's lots of options, I think. The ground just goes to the protect. So uh, this is the opportunity that Ricky wants if he can double target the Bronzong. And he does go for the Nature's Madness into the Bronzong. So um, again, this is uh, Scarf Tapu Lele. And we do see the Shadow Ball. Okay, so it is Shadow Ball Mewtwo. Is that going to be enough to knock out the Bronzong? It is. Okay, so that's a really important KO. Uh, if he was not able to knock out the Bronzong there, then... The Bronzong would have uh, just knocked out the Tapu Lele with a Gyro Ball easily. Uh, Groudon here is still in a decent spot. Um, it doesn't have the attack boost anymore, but Precipice Blaze is still going to do a lot of damage to both. Smeargle does come in, um, but this is actually probably like the worst time to bring Smeargle in. Uh, because Smeargle will actually faint to a Nature's Madness. Um, before, a Nature's Madness would not be threatening a knockout on any Pokemon, uh, because it can only do 50% damage. You could still double target uh, one or the other, but... Um, you can only take one KO. But now, uh, Nature's Madness will easily be able to knock out Smeargle and a Psy Strike. <laughs> it might be close on Groudon. I imagine it would do it, though, um, because of the Psychic Terrain and because of Mega Mewtwo Y's high special attack stat. So we'll have to see. But 
Uh, because Nature's Madness is able to knock out Smeargle. Oh, we actually see the spiky shield from Smeargle, so uh, that's two of the moves that we've seen on Smeargle. We've seen uh, Follow Me and Spiky Shield, so um, probably the last, I imagine, usually on these teams you kind of want Wide Guard. So Wide Guard's one option, and you usually want a sleeping move, so probably Spore is the last. Um, and we do see the Strike Strike knock out the crowd out, so good play there from uh, Ricky covering for that. You see the Smeargle, it does not get a speed boost, so uh, in fact it gets a speed drop, so uh, even worse. This uh, speed drop guaranteeing that even if Smeargle lands a double protect on the next turn um, to attempt to get a speed boost and try to spore something, um, which I, I think would be uh, Ricky's way out at this point. Or excuse me, Ethan's way out at this point. Uh, that's not going to work. I actually see the Salamence come in, so this is not a good Pokemon, I think. that. Well, it's not terrible, um, but it's tricky because, again, the Nature's Madness will be able to knock out the Smeargle. You can protect with your Mewtwo. Uh, I'd probably just attack. Um, a Psy Strike? Um, in Psychic Terrain was going to do huge damage to the Salamence. It likely won't knock it out because Mega Salamence has high defense. But the problem is, if you go for Hyper Voice, that definitely won't knock out Mewtwo. And if you go for Double Edge, I'm going to imagine that the combination of Psy Strike and Terrain plus Double Edge Recoil, um, assuming that even knocks out Mewtwo, which it might not, um, will just KO the Salamence in return. So this is a, a really susceptible position for Ethan. And that one turn where he just went for the Nature's Madness Shadow Ball play into the Bronze Line has really paid off. Uh, Nature's Madness does connect um, onto the Smeargle, so Smeargle uh, being at 1 HP, um, although it normally do half damage, uh, Nature's Madness has a minimum damage that it must do, so um, it has to do at least one damage. And we see the side strike into the Salamence, so Salamence has to survive this, and Double Edge Recoil has to not KO, um, but Double Edge um, into Mewtwo, that will definitely... Uh, it doesn't even KO, okay, it doesn't even KO the Mewtwo, so that's a really important damage calculation to know on Ethan's end, um, and the Recoil causes the Salamence to fall. So I'm not exactly sure when uh, Jake and uh, Franklin get back on the mic here. So uh, you might just hear me randomly cut out as I provide some analysis uh, between games one and two. But uh, yeah, ho hopefully it won't be too awkward of a transition. So that was that was pretty interesting. Um, so it seemed like Ethan really had uh, like his game plan seemed pretty strong. Um, you set up Trick Room um, and then you win, right? You just click uh, Gravity P Blades, but Apparently his bronze on lacks gravity, or uh, he didn't want to risk the knockout on. He didn't. Maybe he didn't think the Presbyterian blades would KO the uh, Groudon, and so he uh, so he either lacks gravity or um, he was afraid on that turn of uh, the attack not KOing. And in either case, um, because he wasn't able to take uh, enough KOs quickly enough, uh, this uh, he Ricky had enough protects available to stall out. So he had just uh, Mewtwo and Tapu in the back. And uh, through some awkward positioning, in my opinion, um, he ended up in a situation where uh, Tapu Lele is actually threatening a knockout on Smeargle, where in other situations, like for example, if you have Salamence and Groudon on at the same time, it would not be threatening a knockout. I think perhaps uh, a play Ethan could have made that would have been better would have been uh, to Gyro Ball and Presbyterian Blades with your Groudon, because um, either you take a knockout on Tapu Lele, and then your Bronzong likely is able to 1v1 the uh, Mewtwo. I mean, you don't know whether or not it has Shadow Ball and things of that sort. But the uh, alternative, which was uh, protect Groudon and try to be safe, you know, take your knockout type of Lele, was met with a punish by Nature's Madness and Shadow Ball. Seems like you're in a better position. Ooh, hey. Oh, I agree, because you can run Gravity Hypnosis too. We have audio now. Nailed it. Okay, audio is back on. We get to do commentary here. Um, so what Jake and I were discussing, just oh. to bring you guys back up to speed, is we were kind of discussing... The fact that Ethan doesn't have gravity on his Bronzong as it appears. Um, I guess so technically he still could, because we only saw three moves, but Skull Swap and Gravity on the same set would be a little mm -hmm. strange. Yeah, so, like, it. Basically, what we were trying to discuss here in, in between the matches was we were trying to figure out um, if it was better to have Gravity or Skill Swap overall, or if it just seemed like it was better to have uh, Gravity in this particular matchup. And kind of what we're settling on right now is that it seems like um, if we were to go back to the drawing boards with Ethan, um, gravity seems like it would be a really good move given the team composition that Ethan already has. Um, but with that, we are in match or game number two of match number one. This is round one of the Kansas City PC, uh, which is really unfortunate because we have this whole deal in game one where we were talking about power rankings and the X-Factor, <laughs> and you guys missed all of that. 
Uh, but anyway, described it in perfect detail. <laughs> it's poetic. Beautiful. Uh, anyway, so now we are in in game two after what was actually a really solid game one. Uh, just seeing how how Ricky kind of kept things together um, and held it all together uh, to kind of go through and get that reverse all kill um, and just sweep through uh, Ethan's team pretty much entirely. Uh, so now That's surprising, we've... like we didn't. I think both of us kind of thought Ethan had it in the bag, and then yeah, Ricky kept his cool really well and knew like exactly how he had to get rid of Trick Room and. Uh, you know, make sure that Bronzong couldn't set it again. Oh, that Bronzong taking that eruption with the berry. That's kind of great. I like that a lot. <laughs> Ethan's got some Oscar tricks berry, up his okay. sleeve today. Yeah. Uh, making sure that he's going to cool. have that trick room set up. Uh, so we did get the follow me from Smeargle, making sure that he was going to get the, uh, the, the trick room off, making sure that he wasn't going to get taunted uh, by Crobat. Uh, so now, yet again, turn one, Ethan does have Trick Room set up, um, and so we're going to have to see some some really good positional uh, play from Ethan to make sure that he is in a good position for the rest of the game, right? Kind of. Like, he got Trick Room up, but he took a lot of damage in the process, and his mm -hmm. Smiggle's taunted, so it like almost has to switch out, and whatever comes in has to take an eruption, uh, because this Bronzong is not going to be able to weaken it very well at all, so even though this Groudon coming in it does resist, but it's still going to take a pretty sizable chunk, and this and this also could be something that Ricky could read and instead go for like a precipice blades or something. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking while we saw that that turn play out um, that we've got this skill swap here, which is kind of coming in here, and you can see that that Ethan is almost playing to that chance of, of precipice blades, uh, and so we've got a super fang that's coming in into this bronzong slot. It looks like Ricky's probably expecting a switch or just trying to weaken everything as much as possible, um, and then. I missed what that Groudon did on Ricky's side. Into the Smurgle slot. Ooh. Um, and Bronzong's skull swap. So it was a good turn for Ethan. You know, he gets his Groudon in. Now it really doesn't... It's not scared of anything right now. It's got Levitate, so it doesn't have to worry about Earth Power or Precipice Blades. Uh, Crobat can Super Fang it down to 50, but uh, not at the cost of... No, not without taking a Gyro Ball, uh, as it just did, so... Yeah, so we do see that Gyro Ball going into Crobat, doing a pretty decent amount of damage, and then Ethan going for that Presbus Blades, doing a good chunk of damage to that Groudon as well, <laughs> bringing it down into the red. Um, but now this Crobat going to go ahead and go for Super Fang and bring Ethan's Groudon down to half HP. Yeah, so I think Ricky tried to make a play there. Um, mm -hmm. He Earth-powered the Levitating Groudon. There's no way he forgot. Like, it that would be a little bit naive to just say, oh, he forgot, because it happened last turn. So mm -hmm. I think he might have expected Ethan to try to skill swap again, mm -hmm. uh, possibly trying to protect his Bronzong from an Earth Power. Uh, and so uh, kind of an aggressive play there. It didn't pay off, as you see, because now Ethan uh, could pretty easily take... Oh my god, he does have... <laughs> Ethan just sitting here with gravity, making sure that he's hiding tech as much as possible. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Ethan. Wow. <laughs> that's that's pretty incredible. Uh, so the only thing that I can imagine here is that Ethan wants to to reserve some tech for later, later in the day, later in matches uh, against Ricky. Um, maybe he thought that Trick Room against this team was just gonna take out Ricky, like we assumed initially. Uh, but wow, incredible! I did not see that coming. No, me neither. That. That was, <laughs> we were just talking about how, like, oh, there's no way he has gravity, but no, I, like I was saying earlier before, <laughs> I think before the audio came back, I really like gravity on solo Groudon teams, just because I think skill swap is a little bit more useful for Kyogre than Groudon in general, obviously coming in handy here, so it, it has a place, but uh, I think the, the lack of Dark Void in this format gives Bronzong way more flexibility with its moveset, because it was almost always running, like, if it had skill swap, it usually had safeguard, and it almost always had a lum barrier, or chest barrier, or something like that. And so, like we saw the Aka Berry earlier, that kind of protects it from both fire and ground moves from Groudon, so it can set up Trick Room and Groudon's face way easier. Uh, and it's uh, having that skill swap in gravity gave Ethan the flexibility he needed in this game uh, to prime himself for that KO and then make sure he hit those blades. Yeah, so now what we've seen, and this is something that we mentioned in, in game one, which is unfortunate because, again, we didn't have audio, but. Uh, we have seen evidence that this Tapu Lele is Choice Scarf, 
uh, which mm -hmm. means that it's not likely to be able to protect because it would only be locked into protect. So in this position, uh, basically, uh, Ricky brings out that Tapu Lele uh, before Trick Room ends, and it basically is forced to eat that Gyro Ball. A smart target. Ethan knew that Tapu Lele couldn't protect, and so it, it's a good idea to get him or get Ricky down to just one Pokemon, so he has less to worry about. Yeah, and at this point, we've got that Mewtwo kind of versus the world here. He's going to do as much damage to this crowd on as possible. Does get the KO, uh, but this does also mean that Mewtwo is up against three other Pokemon, and Trick Room is again once or is set once again. Mewtwo being so fast means that this game is pretty much over. You know, Gyro Ball plus any attack from whatever Ethan brought. Uh, well, not Smeargle, but Gyro Ball, if, if that Salamence <laughs> did come in, like Gyro Ball Double Edge would be able to finish it off easily. Uh, smart from Ethan to bring in Smeargle here because he doesn't have to reveal his last Pokemon just yet. Uh, mm -hmm. If there's a chance that he could knock out this Mewtwo with a couple Gyro Balls before he has to reveal his fourth. Uh, it's always good to preserve information if you can, but you know, even if he does get forced to bring in that fourth, it, it's still going to be over. Yeah, and it looks like Ethan is absolutely trying to play the, the information game here. Uh, he is going to try and put that Mewtwo to sleep, make sure that Smeargle isn't taking damage if he was going to use Follow Me, for example. Yeah. Um, so the, that's, issue with, I mean, that's brilliant. the issue with Spore there, though, is that Mewtwo Y has Insomnia. <laughs> yeah, that is that is unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> so so I guess it's not going to work out, but you right. can see that he's definitely trying to preserve as much information as I mean, I guess as possible. It's better that Ethan figures it out now instead of like, Game 3 <laughs> or something that's like for that. Sure. But... I mean, even yeah. so, like... Um, I will say that um, Ethan, being a, a good friend of mine in the Kansas City area, um, Ethan, sometimes one of his weaknesses as a player is that anything that he's that he hasn't experienced very frequently, um, he will sometimes not recognize what, um, what some of those niche texts might be. Um, and so that might be what's going on here. Or maybe he predicted the protect and he's just like, hey, look, you know I have spores, so I'm just going to try and troll you here for a second. Um, <laughs> either one of those could be a potential reason out of out of Ethan. Uh, we do see that he went for that spiky shield there, preventing Smeargle from taking any damage. Um, so I think it's probably more likely that he understands exactly what his opponent is doing in his head. So uh, Ethan I... taking a very convincing game two here. Um, even with Trick Room running out, still making sure that he's got a, a commanding lead for basically that entire game. In that turn one, it, it didn't look great for Ethan. He got Trick Room up, but he had Bronzong Smeargle in against a Groudon. Uh, and so he was going to be struggling to make progress unless he, made, unless he made some sort of play. And the mm -hmm. switch and skill swap put him in a great spot. You know, he got some chip damage off on both the next turn and then fired off the Gravity P-Blades. And uh, it was way easier for him to take control of the game from there, especially because Ricky was forced to bring in that type of Lele, which you know, really, it, there was nothing Ricky could have done to prevent it from getting knocked out that turn. And then from there, Ethan just had to make sure he got one more knockout before yeah, he lost all four of his Pokemon. And thinking about it a little further, um, it looks like Ricky, I want to give Ricky a, a little benefit here because we were, it looks like Jake will be back in just a second. Um, it, it seems like, oh, welcome back, Jake. Um, it seems like Ricky may have been wondering, um, uh, because not a, the other swap that we have, right? Um, ooh, Jake, no, don't leave me. Anyway, so I'm wondering if, if Ricky might have thought that, um, that Pac Ethan was going to be able to, to swap positions here, um, switch things around between Groudon and Bronzon, um, Trying to make some reads here. Obviously, with Eruption on a low health route, I'm not going to be able to do nearly as much damage. Uh, so, a smart move from Ricky there to not just spam Eruption and do, you know, free damage overall. Uh, if Jake were back, unfortunately, his Discord is having issues at this exact moment. Uh, I'd ask him for a little bit of commentary here on what he thinks that Ricky needs to do to compensate, uh, especially with that, you know, pretty convincing game, too, where Ethan made a lot of a lot of changes, namely using gravity, right? Yeah, I don't really know what you just said because Discord. Was... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I Basically, heard what used adjustments? Gravity game two, and that is objectively correct. <laughs> <laughs> what, what adjustments would you like to see out of these two players to continue going forward? Because obviously, we saw Ethan go uh, go for gravity, and that changed kind of the end game there. Uh, 
But then right. at that point, Ricky needs to kind of adjust to that as well for this game three to try and win. This is a good lead from Ethan. It, instead of you know going straight for the trick room mode, he has Salamence out. Uh, mm -hmm. And unless this is a rogue HP Ice Groudon, he's going to be able to you know, fire off like a Hyper Voice or Double Edge or something and weaken that eruption uh, without too much trouble. It's something like a Super Fang coming out from Crobat could be annoying, but if Crobat Super Fangs the Salamence, it can't taunt the Smeargle, so something might go to sleep. And so mm -hmm. this kind of puts Ethan on like the on the on the front foot instead yeah. of you know hoping to set up Trick Room Turn One this time. I think seeing Smeargle, especially uh, knowing that. It's got a, quite a variety of choices, right? He's got the Spore, he's he's got the Follow Me, so it really puts Ricky in an awkward position where he has to try and predict what Ethan wants to do uh, with this Smeargle. So we're gonna jump into this this first turn. We've got the Mega Salamence, as we kind of expected, uh, and it looks like Spiky Shield is gonna come out here for Ethan, uh, trying to prevent as much damage going into that Smeargle, keep it around as long as possible. We do see damage trying to go into that Smeargle, so unfortunately for for Ricky here, that Tailwind is going to go up, no problems. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do see... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eruption does actually a, a decent amount of damage to Salamence here. Uh, Jake is still having issues with Discord, so I'm still going to do the play-by-play -play for him as well. Uh, but we do see here at the end of that turn, uh, Tailwind is up, Salamence is still around. Uh, no real damage going, no damage at all going into that Smeargle. Uh, no damage coming out of Ethan at all, but he still has a pretty good control of the board with the speed control out. Uh, Crobat being kind of isolated on its own, not able to get anything going. Uh, and now Ethan, again, just best foot forward here, making sure that he's got everything going. Spore putting that Crobat to sleep, so there's no Tailwind potential, no Taunt potential out of this Crobat anymore. And Hyper Voice coming out of here doing a little bit of extra damage to that Groudon to try and weaken any eruptions that are coming out. Okay. Are you alive again? Yes, you I think it. so. <laughs> and it looks like that Hydro Voice did just enough damage to prevent a KO from uh, from eruption there. Yeah, exactly. He, he prevented the eruption KO, got some damage on both, uh, put the Crobat to sleep, and now he's going to be able to spore the Groudon too if he wants to. And so, pretty good spot for me then, just because he... And here, this Crobat, even if it wakes up, it uh, won't be able to knock out Salamence unless it happens to have some random offensive move. And so, uh, the Salamence very, very likely not going to be knocked out on this coming turn. So, it looks like Ricky's Groudon is going to go for that Protect, try and keep itself alive just a little bit longer. Also keeps it awake just a little bit longer. Double Edge here, going to go into Crobat. Uh, a little bit of risky business here because that is going to do some recoil damage to a Salamence that's very low on health, but make sure that he, he clears out that Crobat. Uh, it looks like this game, Ethan is very much respecting that Crobat, a little bit more than he has previously. Well, yeah, and it's I'm sure that was a calculated play on Ethan's end too because he knew that if we double edge that slot, the Crobat gets knocked out, which is good, but uh, the Salamence also gets knocked out, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because now he gets a free switch into what I assume is probably going to be Groudon. And so he still has this Smeargle. Oh no, he actually has his Xerneas. And this is a Pokemon that we haven't seen out of Ethan yet. Um, Xerneas coming in here. Uh, obviously, again, we haven't seen it, so we don't... We... we ugh, stumbling. So, Xerneas, usually going to have Geomancy, but there might be some cute tech, because we've seen a lot of cute tech out of Ethan so far. Um, just seeing the fact that his bronze on, he was hiding that gravity. Um, there's a lot of weird things that we can see out of Xerneas that we don't often see. Well, we can see them, but why would we? <laughs> there's a reason Xerneas has like one move set, and it's because it's just like the best, almost objectively. And so, and maybe mm -hmm. like something like Substitute got a little bit of um, use in the past couple series, but. I really don't think Xerneas has much of a reason to deviate from, you know, the standard Moonblast Gleam. Alright, so we did see that Spore. We're going to go ahead and see a Geomancy come out here. Um, it looks like Ethan is just going to have probably a standard expected end game here. Uh, wants to get that plus two all the way around. Make sure that our, our shiny rainbow deer is going to get set up. <laughs> uh, and seeing that, the, that this is a special Groudon, um, I mean, this is actually really beneficial for, for Ethan here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he he's not able to fire off something like a precipice blades that would you know do more damage through that geomancy boost. You know, and so instead of taking like half from a P blades or a fire punch, uh, the Xerneas is sitting at like 65, 70 percent you know, with its mm -hmm. boost, uh, and so. This is a really good spot for Ethan because now he has the Smeargle that still has the Spore option. Uh, we've seen the Follow Me option, and we already know that this Xerneas is going to be able to start taking to KOs here. Especially considering this Groudon is, you know, Eruption, Earth Power, Flamethrower. It's probably not trained to be very bulky. So even yeah. something like a Moonblast and Xerneas might be able to finish it off here. And so at this point, uh, how much do you have to respect the Landorus? Not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess, yeah, I mean... Actually, you know, you probably want to knock out Landorus first in case it does something like Groundium or something. That Groundium, Tectonic Rage will be able to finish off Xerneas from here. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess Groudon isn't really doing much at this point because we did see Flamethrower do such little damage, and we obviously Eruption is going to do nothing at this point because it's so low. Yeah. Uh, it'll finish off Smeargle from the Focus Sash and then do, like, two damage to Xerneas, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, at that point, that was his absolutely best move from that Groudon. Uh, yeah. It looks like we're going to keep Landorus asleep one more turn. Uh, and then we're going to see Ethan bring out his fourth Pokemon, this Groudon, uh, which, based on, being in its base form, has not yet hit the field. Uh, going to go ahead and reveal that shiny black Groudon once again. <laughs> um, but yeah, at this point, with such low HP, uh, I mean, both Pokemon on Ricky's side are basically toast. Um and I don't remember... I don't remember if we've seen what's in the back yet. I don't think we have. It was just Crobat and Groudon mm -hmm. we've seen so far. I, I'm guessing it's either Mewtwo or Tapu Lele. Uh, and we but... do see this Landorus going for Protect, revealing that it is absolutely not Assault Vest, uh, which we probably could have surmised by the damage that Dazzling Gleam did. Right. Uh, but it looks like... It looks like Ricky wants to keep this alive to just try and um, reduce the amount of damage that's going to come in from a spread move, uh, because we do have a little bit of damage reduction on any spread moves that are are used in Pokemon. So that's a smart move on Ricky's side to try and keep this Mewtwo alive, just uh, maybe a, a hair longer here. Yeah, I mean, it'll take less damage from Dazzling, Dazzling Gleam and then immediately get knocked out by a Fire Punch, and so... Yeah. A little bit too little too late. Like it, Technically, it was a smart play to protect Landorus, but at this point, it didn't really matter because Dazzling Gleam will finish it off no matter what. And then Dazzling Gleam plus anything from Groudon will finish off the Mewtwo. And so Ethan switching it up this game to very good effect because you know, he knew that you know, he kind of lost his footing in game two when we thought he had it won. Sorry, in game one when he thought he had it yep. won. And then turned it around in game two, but then switch it up again in game three to keep Ricky guessing. And so... Yeah, he knew that his team had these different modes that he was able to use very well. And it does look like Ricky's going to go ahead and get that double protect here, which is really nice. And so at this point, if nothing else, uh, this is a good position for Ricky to get some, some mental damage calcs in. And as you said, Ethan just going to go ahead and go here for that fire punch directly into Mewtwo, make sure that he seals the deal. Uh, but so actually, got kinda... if ahead. Ricky had been able to knock out Xerneas with Psy Strike there, I think he just won. Yeah. Because, assume, well, assuming the Landorus is Groundium. If this is mm -hmm. Groundium Z Landorus and it does have that Tectonic Rage, you know, if he was able to get that double protect and possibly finish off Xerneas with a side strike, you know, pass that J-Mancy boost, he would have been able to knock out Groudon the next turn with the Tech Rage, but unfortunately not able to finish off that Xerneas in time. Yeah, this was actually just a phenomenal set. Uh, it's unfortunate that you guys weren't able to hear us for, round, for game one, uh, but man, what a great round. Yeah, no, definitely a lot of fun. Two, three great games. Um, it was fun to see how both these players switched it up after each game. I think Ethan just knew, you know, exactly how he had to beat what Ricky was bringing after he lost that first game, and so uh, it was it was a very smart mix up with the Salmon Smeargle and not bringing the Bronze on because Ricky kind of overprepared for the Trick Room mode, I think. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we are going to go ahead and wrap up round one. We will see you guys in round two.